Thank you, Nosa. Okay, I taught school at the National Liberian Cultural Center School for a few years, and uh, one of the stories that I will never, ever forget, a thing that happened was uh, we noticed that there was a smell in the air in my village of Kindija, and I didn't quite know at first what it was. I thought it was just some little dog that had died. But every day the smell got worse and worse and worse until everyone was walking around with a mask over their face or a turpentine or anything in there. And I was like, what on earth has happened? There was this horrible, horrible smell. And my, I, said, I asked my students, I said, what is that? Where is this? This must be a very large animal that has died. And my students told me, no, teacher, that human being. I said, what? That human being? He's been dead for maybe three, five days now. I said, what do you mean he's a human being above ground? They said, yeah. I said, well, why won't people call the police? They said, oh, no, we can't call the police because we call the police. They say, you take me to it. You take, the, you take them to them. And then they say, okay, you did it. Open and shut case. Well, I knew that the police would not arrest me. So I asked my student, Zaid and Jala Kroma, to take me to where the, where the person was. They said he'd been hit by a car and someone had just drug him in the woods. Well... That was the first time I ever saw a dead body. I mean, like, dead, like, dead, dead. I mean, like, this body was so dead that he had blown up and there were maggots and flies, everything flying around him. And he was just lying in the middle of, a, of, of some bushes. And the smell was, was just horrendous. We, you, there was not enough uh, cloth to put over your face for that. So I left my students and told them to run away. <laughs> and I, um, I uh, uh, caught the money bus down to the police station that was not too far from my house. And I brought the police back and showed them where the body was. And they said, thank you, yeah, thank you, yeah. But of course, they didn't arrest me. I walked around for the rest of the day and the the very fact of that incident really affected me and I began to see some things that were common to me in a new light and I remember I wrote this poem that day there are no trees on this road to cool a head too well warmed by the sun land of dark-skinned people life and death are taken casually here and beautiful soft-eyed women wrapped in brightness, head, back, and belly bursting with life. The air is too full for the dead, and life is hard on those who cannot move. Old Ma, sitting on cement seat, I passed your hand open and empty, without a glance. I saw you, Old Ma, I saw you, but selfishness and need have strange children sometimes, and the will to survive does not often come in the plural sense. Apologies cannot fill a stomach too long vacant. The small boy looked at me, mouth stretching skeleton's grin. Hey, chick, hey, baby, give me five, give me five. I thought he wanted to slap. Hey, here you go. <laughs> but he looked still. Dark eyes hungry, searching. I say, Mommy, why are you beating me so? I say, I hungry. You can't give me five. I only want five cents. I only need five cents, Mommy. I can buy two oranges with five cents. Dogs beg for death in this place while you begged for silver tokens of life. Give me five. The sidewalk makes a cruel bed, old man. Who gave you this? Who gave you this? Once you laughed loud and strong and loved many women with fine brown arms, hot thrusting loins. But who gave you this? Selfishness or need? 
Now strength and good times have fled, leaving only your heart to fight. And here you sleep on the sidewalk. Who gave you this? Tears cannot flow in the face of hopelessness, and dry promises of better times only make reality harder to take. Who gave Africa this? You are beautiful, Africa. You are beautiful. But the eyes that cry for you are too many to count. Too many to count. I would cry. But tears will only water the ground for more life to travel along this road that has no trees. <laughs>